Hi everyone, marhaba, kifkun, how are you? I hope everyone's good. So I am in Lebanon and I'm doing a lesson from Lebanon. So hopefully the connection will continue being good. Let me know if anything goes wrong. Yeah, I'm going to wait for everyone to join before I start my lesson. And uh, I want to tell you before we begin that uh, I'm running 30 day challenge courses. These are pre recorded Lebanese Arabic 30 day challenge courses. And when I say Lebanese Arabic, it's, it's the Levantine Arabic, which means under the Levantine Arabic, there are the Lebanese, the Jordanian, the Palestinian, and the Syrian. Um, dialects. So this is going to be a Levantine Arabic lesson, but it's also a lesson that's very, very useful for anyone who's learning Arabic, whether it's spoken Arabic or it's standard Arabic, because what we're, what we're going to do today applies also um, to other dialects and it also applies to standard Arabic. So it's something that has similar rules, basically, to standard Arabic. So it's useful for everyone. Um, and yalla, let's begin. So today we're going to talk about the idafa. And idafa, literally what it means is addition. So uh, in standard Arabic, we say adafa yudifu, which means he added or he adds. And the word idafa means uh, addition, idafa. And why do we mm. use this word? It's a grammar lesson, by the way. We use this word um, to talk about uh, what uh, it's to talk about the apostrophe s in um, English, or uh, to say something belongs to someone, the something of someone else. Uh, so this is basically the genitive construction. Okay. So when I start explaining, things will get clearer. I hope. Yeah. So the the actual grammatical term for this is. Idafa. So here I have finjin ahwe. Okay, finjin is a mug or a cup of coffee, and ahwe means coffee. Okay, so what do you say in English? You say a cup of coffee. So you have the of here. In Arabic, we don't have the of. So basically, what we're actually literally saying, cup. Coffee. Just by, by placing the two nouns together, we understand there is a hidden of here, which we don't have. So we, when you just say cup coffee, we understand it's a cup of coffee. Okay? Now, I want to talk about the idafa with both definite and indefinite words. So, for example, here, finjain also means a cup or a mug. And in this case, I didn't say finjain ahwe. I said finjain al ahwe. The cup of coffee. Finjain al ahwe. So in English, you would say the cup of coffee. In Arabic, what we're literally saying, literally, literally, we're saying cup of the coffee. So basically, whenever I have the idafa construction, and think of it as noun plus noun, whenever you have a noun plus noun, and you want to make it definite, yeah, and you want to say the cup of coffee, put the L to the second word, not to the first word, finjain al ahwe. Now, can I say il finjain al ahwe? Like if I add il here, would it be right? If anyone knows, let me know. Who knows? Can I say the cup of the coffee? Let me see. YouTube is a little bit slow for people to type, but I'm going to wait. Hi, Zen. Hi. See. So let me know. Do you think I can say or just if I want to say the cup of coffee? So I just said uh, that if I want to say a cup of coffee, a cup of coffee, I say finjain ahwe. We don't even have an indefinite article. We don't have a, a cup of coffee, a cup of coffee. I'm just saying cup, coffee, or mug, coffee, cup, coffee, which means a cup of coffee. And I said whenever I want to say the cup of coffee, I'm literally saying cup, the coffee which means the cup of coffee. 
So can I say il fanjan il ahwe or that would be wrong? It would be right. No, we can't say it. Bravo. Bravo, Jukava. Bravo, Navila. Bravo, Si. We can't say it. That would be wrong. So whenever you have a noun plus noun, you have to put the L to the second noun when uh, uh, you want to make it definite. Now, when it comes to this grammatical rule, maybe it's easy. Maybe it's difficult, but maybe for some of you it's easy. But the difficulty is in the application, especially when you're being fluent and you're speaking. A lot of times, my students tend to make a mistake, although they know the rule, but sometimes it takes uh, time to internalize it. So the more you practice, the better. فهمنا؟ يلا خلونا نعمل تاني uh, تاني مثال the second example عندنا هون we have here كيس سكر okay so a bag of sugar okay so we don't have an of I'm literally and we don't have a a uh, I'm literally saying bag sugar and we understand it's a bag of sugar okay now if I want to say the bag of sugar the bag of sugar. Uh, I'm not saying it like that. El kis sikkar. La, غلط. It's wrong. I have to put the L to the second word. So it's kis sikkar. And as if you are saying bag the sugar. Bag of the sugar. So you put the V to the second now. Kis sikkar. Now, Something I just want to mention here in terms of pronunciation, don't forget it. So here, when I said فنجان الأهوي, لفظت اللام, I pronounced the lam, فنجان الأهوي. بس هون ما لفظت اللام, I didn't pronounce the lam. ليه? لأنه سين حرف شمسي, because سين is a sun letter, and all the words that start with the سين, whenever we put an L before them, we don't pronounce the lam. ما منلفظ اللام. منقول كيس السكر. We say the bag of the sugar, which means the bag of sugar. بس هون قاف أهوي قاف حرف أمري. It's a moon letter. And when I say moon letter, it means all the words that start with the قاف. Whenever I put an L before them, لازم ألفظ اللام. I have to pronounce the lam. So here, that's why I said فنجان الأهوي. And here, كيس السكر pronounced as كيس السكر. So we're not pronouncing the lam. Okay? طيب, if anyone has a question, yalla, start typing them from now so that I can answer them later on. Because YouTube takes a couple of seconds to, to paste the questions. Yalla. Now let's try words that are with a T marbuta, يعني feminine words, okay? Masalan, كلمة كباية, the word كباية, on its own, it's written كباية. Actually, I have to zoom out for those of you who don't know how to read the Arabic script. But guys, you have to learn the Arabic script. It's really important. It makes you more fluent. It's easier than you imagine. You can finish it in two to three weeks to write, and then in one month to be fluent in reading. And then the more you practice, two months later, three months later, you will be really fluent in reading and writing. Okay? So do it. Don't leave this as a gap in your learning journey. So the word كباية on its own is pronounced as a A. The T marbuta is here. Actually, look, I wrote it between brackets, but I don't pronounce it because whenever we have words with a T marbuta on their own, we don't pronounce them. But this rule is broken whenever we have another noun next to it. يعني مثلا, here I have كباية, cup, and then I have حليب, a cup of milk. Okay? ما فيني أقول كباية حليب I can't say كباية حليب لازم أقول كباية حليب So I pronounce the term مربوطة whenever it's followed by another noun So whenever you have a noun plus noun or think of it whenever you have uh, something of something it, it means if a word has a term مربوطة you pronounce it كباية حليب Okay, so think of it as noun plus noun. It's easier. It applies maybe 99.9% .9 of the times. Okay, so كبيت حليب, a cup of milk. Now, you can think of it even this way. كبيت يعني cup. كبيت. كبيت يعني a cup of. Okay, so كبيت حليب, a cup of coffee. Now, if I want to say the cup of coffee, 
again بنحط ال ال بتاني كلمة we put the ال in the second word so كباية الحليب the cup of coffee غلط لازم نلفظ الت we have to pronounce the t so instead of saying كباية الحليب I have to say كباية الحليب كباية ال حليب the cup of uh, milk so here I said the cup of milk in English in Arabic what you're literally literally saying cup there is a hidden of and then you're saying the milk you're putting the the in the second word only not the first word so fina ul el kibaye الحليب لا أكيد لا غلط it's wrong so I can't say الكباية الحليب I have to say كباية الحليب كباية الحليب now let's look at the next one we have here شنطة يعني bag سفر يعني traveling so noun plus noun شنطة سفر in alone I pronounce it as شنطة okay مع أ وسفر on its own but شنطة سفر أكيد لا what I do here is a very very nice pronunciation trick I'm gonna give you now when it comes to spoken Arabic specifically Levantine Arabic or Lebanese dialect it doesn't apply to standard Arabic in standard Arabic you will still keep it شنطة you will pronounce the T and you will say سفر شنطة سفر okay any of my students who did the course remember how I pronounce this in the Lebanese dialect or in Levantine Arabic? Okay, I am going to pronounce the t write it in the comment box so I see if anyone remembers it. So I can say shantat safar in the Lebanese dialect or in Levantine Arabic. Specifically, something else happens when it comes to the Lebanese accent when I'm pronouncing the te marbuta of the idafa. How do I pronounce it? Who's going to tell me? Shu, I'm gonna wait because YouTube takes a couple of seconds to give me your answers. Yalla, ana natra, ana natra, yani I am waiting. I'm literally saying I am the waiter. Ana natra, yani I'm waiting. Yalla, who's gonna give? Rosie, yalla, give me the answer. Nabila, you should remember this. Shu, who's remembering? Bravo, Rosie. Shantit safar. Shantit safar. So what happened here, if you notice, Rosie wrote E-T in the end. So basically, look, I'm going to zoom in for you to see. Okay. And let me, I don't like when there's mess. Let me erase this. Okay. So, shufu. Usually on its own, the word is shanta and has a fatha. The moment I come and I pronounce the tema ruta here, the fatha becomes a kasra. The fatha becomes a kasra. يعني بدل ما نقول شنطة سفر منقول شن تت ات سفر. Okay? Is that really شن تيت ات لا ات more ات شن تت سفر. And this applies 100% of the times in the Lebanese dialect when you're pronouncing the tema ruta. مفهوم؟ if you have questions, write it in the comment box. If you have questions, write it in the comment box. Okay? So, shantit safar, a bag of traveling, which means a suitcase, basically. Shantit safar. But if I want to say the suitcase, I will have to say the, the bag of the traveling in Arabic. Okay? And actually, I'm saying bag of the traveling in Arabic. So, that's why I didn't say shanta. السفر and I didn't say الشنطة شنطة سفر غلط وغلط these two are wrong I just put the L to the second word شنطة السفر okay يلا now we will talk about another rule if I, uh, so basically here we were talking about the definite words. Yani definite means we know who's the person or we know what's the object. Okay, like here, kibayt al-halib, I'm saying the cup, the cup of coffee. Yani I know which cup of coffee, right? Here, when it comes to fistan, ukhti. 
I wrote Fustan Akhti, but do you think it's correct or it's wrong? Should I say Fustan Akhti? لازم أقول فستان أختي أو فستان الأختي شو؟ يلا اكتبوا guys يلا رايت أي وحدة صح I'm saying فستان by the way فستان يعني um, dress and I said by the way do you know what by the way means it means عفوءة by the way عفوءة فستان عفوءة uh, يعني dress أختي يعني my sister أخت Sister, أختي, with the A here, يعني my sister. فستان أختي. Okay, شو لازم أقول فستان أختي أو فستان الأختي? Which one is correct? يلا, I'm gonna wait for you guys to give me the answer. Hi, Yanni. Hi, C. Nabila. Um, I'm not sure. Apex, what's your name? Rosie Zen. Jukava. يلا شو شو منقول what do I say uh, فستان أختي أو فستان الأختي آه. <تصفيق> يلا هاي ريجينا صح فستان أختي why because the word أختي is already definite. I know. I'm saying my sister. I know whose sister is, is it. So it is. So basically, you can't say in English this uh, the dress of the my sister, right? You just say my sister. It's weird when you say the my sister. The same applies in Arabic. I can't say the and then my sister. So because when I say al there's the the here and the a means my. So غلط. أكيد غلط. So فستان this is the time when you have an idafa and you have a noun plus noun and even if you want to make it definite which is here already definite we can't add an l okay ma fina nzid al l ghalat it's wrong bas men mul fustan akhti okay nafs al shi hun bayt khale i like to pronounce it khale as well khal or khil is the same and maybe a bit village style okay so uh, Matin style. Matin is um, how do I say? Matin is uh, district. Yeah, district. Okay, in Lebanon, it's a it's a district called Matin. Basically, that's where I come from. Okay, so Beit Khali or Beit Khali. Again, we have Beit, يعني house, Khal or Khal, يعني um, uh, uncle, but from your mom's side, يعني maternal uncle, and the A here means my. So, ما فينا نقول بيت الخالي. That's wrong. I have to say بيت خالي. So, if I add here بيت, let's say الخالي, I'm literally saying house of the and my uncle, which would be wrong. فهمنا مفهوم. Okay. Now, another time when I can't add an L is whenever there is a proper noun. Okay. يعني سينتيا, my sister's name here. سينتيا. That's the name. So I uh, can I say the Cynthia, the George, uh, the 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 Rosie, the Regina, the Nabila? Of course not, because these are proper nouns. The same in Arabic. We never say the when it comes to uh, to a proper noun. So that's why when I want to say the dress of Cynthia or Cynthia's dress, I say just dress Cynthia, and there's the hidden of. Okay. Which we don't use. Fustan, Cynthia. The same applies here, here when I want to use a feminine word with Cynthia. The word tanura on its own has a te marbuta, which is silent, we don't pronounce. Yani skirt, tanura. But if you pronounce the te marbuta, I'm not going to say tanurat. You can, it's not wrong. With the Lebanese accent, we add the kesra and it becomes tanurit. Tanurit Cynthia. So think of it this way. Tanura يعني skirt. Tanurit with the Tamar Buta pronounced يعني the skirt of. Okay? So Tanurit Cynthia, the skirt of Cynthia. I'm going to leave it here. And tomorrow, probably tomorrow or in the next lesson, I'll try to come tomorrow. I'll let you guys know uh, in advance if I come tomorrow or not. From here, I'm going to talk about when we use 
of there is actually in Arabic it does exist but we have to use it with something else so for today this is enough information for your brain tomorrow I'm gonna talk about this I'm gonna continue the lesson and talk about what to do and how to pronounce whenever there is an adjective okay let's quickly recap and whoever has a question write it in the comment box I'm gonna read this again and quickly translate it and also before I go who I just want to let you know I have pre-recorded pre-recorded 30-day challenge courses all the way from absolute beginners to advanced and it's very nice to come to YouTube and do lessons together it's very nice to go to my TikTok by the way I, I upload three to four lessons there uh, on a daily basis very very short lessons and like fun ones mostly um, and on Instagram too globetrot with Arabic these are very nice, but it's also very important to learn a language with structure. So if you're serious about wanting to improve your Arabic and learning Arabic, uh, the 30-day challenge courses or any program that has structure is very important because things are taught or like you are guided from point A to point B to point C, like from A to Z one thing leads to another and structure is very important to learn a language so if this is something you're interested in get in touch i'm going to leave my email address under this video yalla i'm going to repeat now finjain ahwe yani a cup of coffee finjain al ahwe yani the cup of coffee if you have questions write them down kis sikkar yani a bag of sugar kis sikkar kis sikkar yani the bag of sugar كباية حليب a cup of coffee كباية الحليب uh, the cup of coffee notice also I pronounce the l before حليب because the letter ح is a sun letter حرف شمسي which means we have to pronounce the lam if you don't know the lessons uh, the sun lessons uh, sun letters and moon letters do I have a lesson on that on YouTube I don't think I have one maybe I can make a full lesson on sun letters and moon letters in another lesson the next one is shanta on its own, but when I want to say a bag of traveling, which means a suitcase, I say shantit safar. Or if I want to say the suitcase, I say shantit safar, shantit safar. The scene in safar is a sun letter. So I don't say shantitil safar. I'm not going to pronounce the lamb. By the way, if you say shantitil safar, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's not like, oh my God, the biggest mistake. No. We just don't say it. You sound more native when you say shanta to suffer. Fustan ukhti, yani the dress of my sister or my sister's dress. And bait khali, bait, bait or bait. I like to pronounce bait or bait, nafs shi. Bait khali or bait khali, nafs shi. The house of my uncle, yani my uncle's house. Fustan Cynthia, yani the dress of Cynthia. Or Cynthia's dress, Tanurit Cynthia. Notice how I pronounce the Temar Butahir. Tanurit Cynthia, the, dr uh, the skirt of Cynthia, or Cynthia's skirt. That's it for today. Yalla, let me check your comments, questions. Uh, and I'm saying Marhaba also to everyone who's saying Marhaba and hello. Uh, Fernjan Ahwe is correct, but not Il Fernjan Ahwe, Sah. Shantit Safar, Shantit Safar, okay. Riyadiyat, mathematics is Riyadiyat, Riyadiyat. It's not Riyadah sports, it's Riyadiyat. But by the way, in Lebanon, we say Mat or Math. Why? Simply because most schools if not all of them are either english educate like english programs or french programs okay french schools french system schools or english system schools so we study these uh, subjects in french or in uh, english we never study them in arabic by the way fustan ukhti sah no article sah and is the expression near and also in idafa uh, so that we have to say sintil alfu It's also uh, it, it's also with sint. So somebody's asking, Regina's asking, whenever we have the year of something, for example, the word sine on its own, 
it has a te marbuta which we don't pronounce. So whenever we put it before a number or before a year, we have to pronounce also the te marbuta. Sintil blah blah blah. Uh, <laughs> yes, 30 day challenge. Okay. Okay. And how can I join your on online course? I'm going to leave an email in the description box. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow. Yalla. Bye, guys.